Folks, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. I'll explain. Number one, it's absolutely free. It means you don't pay a dime out of pocket. Number two, you can cre- use creation tools to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer like I'm doing with my phone. Number three, if you want to hear it on multiple platforms, Anchor can do that for you. So you can hear it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, among others. And the most and the thing is you can make money without anybody listening. As little as that. And everything you need to do is in your to make a podcast is all here. To get started, please download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You'll be glad you did. In part two of the 2020 Canes opponent preview series, we'll review the 2020 Louisville Cardinals, our opponent up in Louisville on September the 19th. Now, you know what we did to them last year in Hard Rock in the home finale. 52-27 last year. Um, they're going to be out for revenge this year, and we get and, they, and we go up there early in the year. Let's take a look at Louisville. The one thing you have to look at is look at quarterback. Quarterback to get Mikhail Cunningham back. All he did last year was go 112 for 179, 2,085 yards, 22 touchdowns. And he also ran for 482 yards and 6 touchdowns. He's going to be the starter. Pass will be the backup for them. When you go to running back, they have a stud back in, in JV and Hawkins, who set a school record last year with 1,525 yards rushing, and he's set for another monster year. The backup is Hassan Hall, but, they, but they're very high on Jalen Mitchell, and Aiden Robinson is going to get some reps back there. Wide receiver, you know, they got 2 2. Des Fitzpatrick and Justin Marshall. Fitzpatrick had 635 yards of six touchdowns last year on 35 receptions. 2 2 70 catches, 12 76, 12 touchdowns. They're the big guys. They're going to be the starters at wide receiver. Their slot guy is going to be likely Justin Marshall. Uh, Marshall's been a guy that the staff really likes, but it's been limited so far. S- Smith is a guy you want to watch. He's a Juco transfer, former quarterback, maybe looking to Julian Edelman role. He'll get a lot of reps there. Also keep an eye on true freshman Christian Fitzpatrick, as well as Watkins. They're going to get some good reps, and there's plenty of talent at wide receiver for them. Now you look at tight end, it's going to be a a two-headed monster with Ford and Pfeiffer. Now he's a big-time blocker, but he only caught two passes last year, but both were touchdowns. He's a big addition in that tight end room. You got to keep an eye, though, on Marshawn Ford. He's only going to get better. Expect a big year out of him. Now, they'll, now their staff is going to use a lot of guys to get on the field. Now, keep an eye on Isaac Martin. And he's going to get some rest. He played a lot last year. And watch Des Melton. He could get some playing time if, if everything works out. And he could be a good one for them there. Now, the biggest weakness has been the offensive line. Let's put it this way, folks. They were nothing short of atrocious last year. I mean, what can you say about them? Yes, as good as Beck, as good as Beckton was, who went 11th to the Jets, here's what they have back. They get four to five starters back from their bowl game. Now, Brown had a... Now, Brown... Had a pretty good sprint for Renato Brown, as well as keep an eye on, as well on their line, Trevor Reed and um, Cam DeGeorge at right tackle. Those are two big additions there. The latter coming from UConn as a grad transfer. Now, DeGeorge is probably going to be the right tackle. And it's going to be a good battle in, in their fall camp to watch DeGeorge, Brown, and Trevor Reed could play at that spot. But, yeah, they have got to get better on that line. And they have to step up 
the left tackle spot with the loss of Makai Becton, who went 11th to the New York Jets. Now their D line, their D, their front three is not as good as their linebackers, who I'll talk about in a moment. But they have Jared Goldwire on the nose, and there'll be a lot, and he'll have a lot of new faces there battling for time there. They have Yaya Diaby, who wasn't a starter on their media guide, but with a huge fall camp, he'll win a spot in their lineup. And the other, and at the other end, look for Tiberius Peterson to be the other DN there. But you look for Boykin to play a lot of snaps there. The new another newcomer on their on their line is Henry Bryant. Now while Desmond Tell isn't on the list now, keep an eye on him. That could be one you really watch this year. Now their linebackers, as I mentioned earlier, this is the heart and soul of their defense. Okay, with Dorian Etheridge, C.J. Avery, and Roger Burns being three of their top returners back on that side. But a guy who had a pretty quiet year was Yasir Abdullah. He had 45 tackles. Monty Montgomery is a playmaker. You want to keep an eye on him. You'll see him a lot this year for them. But a guy you want to watch is Marvin Dallas. Him along with Trotman are going to see a lot of playing time this year. As well as Thurman Getters. But he's more on a third down situation. But you could see him get a lot more work there. Now when you look at the secondary. They have a veteran there. In Anthony Johnson. And Chandler Jones. Jones has been one of the stalwarts of the secondary. But keep an eye on Greedy Vance and Marquis Lowry. They're newcomers there. And their defensive coordinator, Brian Brown, really thinks very highly of both of them. And Marlon Carriger has been around for a while. He's been a solid backup to Anthony Johnson. Now, Clark, Kiefer Clark will be a huge addition if they can play him. Got to keep an eye on how that transfer plays out from Liberty. You know, they have to wait for a waiver. I don't know how that's going there. Got to see on that. When you look at the safety spots... You have Isaiah Hayes, who came on at the end of last year and should have a big senior year after coming in from Arizona. Russ Geist missed the final two games, but is expected to be ready this year. And they have another elite newcomer in Lovey, Jen Lovey Jenkins, and he'll play a lot. Fago is a super athlete, and we'll see the field again. But keep an eye on Jamil, on Jamil, Jamil Starks and Josh Minkin. They're going to try to work their way up the, the depth chart and both the true freshmen. When you look at their special teams, now while James Turner filled in nicely for Blanton Creek last year when he was hurt as the kickoff guy, and he was listed as the top place kicker on their media guide, Brock Travelstead is coming on a scholarship and he'll win that job come fall camp. The punter's Ryan Harwell's a walk-on, has been on campus long, but... Look for him to be the starting punter. And Mitch Hall is the steady senior, solid long snapper for them. When you look at their schedule. Now the next thing I look at is their schedule. When you look at Louisville's schedule, yes, it's tough. But when you, well, when you see it, you have to know. This team is going to be very, very tough this year. People thinking, people are expecting very, very big things from from that from that group. They open with Western Kentucky at home before they get us up there on September nineteenth. They then they go to Pittsburgh before a bye week, but then they have two tough games: Georgia Tech and at Notre Dame before Florida State and Virginia Tech come in in back to back weeks after Notre Dame. Then they go to Virginia to have a second open week. Then they have Syracuse. Then they have to go up to Boston College late in the year. That's not going to be fun, especially if it's cold up there, as it usually is around November. Then they finish December 5th with Wake Forest at home. I look at this group for Louisville. I can see potentially, and they don't get Clemson, and that's a big break. I got to look maybe when I look at the schedule. 
I'm looking at maybe eight to nine wins out of Louisville this year. So I'm going to go probably eight and three for Louisville in 2020. Part three of the series, we'll talk about the Florida State Seminoles.